17 years ago, Melinda Elmore of Kelowna went to the Olympics in the 1500 meters. Well, now she's back. She'll be going to Tokyo to run in the marathon. And we had a chance to talk to her at the Apple Bowl. Oh, I'm so thrilled. It's, um, it's an amazing opportunity and I just, uh, I'm really, really grateful that I get the chance to go back after 17 years to do this again. Your route to the Olympic team was a bit circuitous. You, you missed the qualifier, which was, what, a year and a half ago or something? Well, I ran in 2004, and then in 2008, I ha had made the Olympic standards to be selected, but Athletics Canada didn't select um, distance runners to make the team that year. Um, backstory, don't need to go into it. Um, 2012, I just missed by a hundredth of a second the time that I needed to be selected. Then I retired in 2012, so I missed 2016. And then I didn't have any real plans to make it in 2020. It was never part of the big picture plan. It just, I got back into running and was running really well and then had a great race and ran the Olympic standard and a Canadian marathon record. And suddenly I was back in the conversation. Well, you can't not send the one who holds, currently holds the, the country's record at the marathon to the Olympics. Uh, yeah, I never would have imagined 17 years ago that at this point I'd still be running, I'd be running the marathon and that I would have, you know, that I'd be representing Canada in the marathon at the Olympics. That just boggles my mind. A lot of people younger than you are out there trying to get to those sort of standards. What is it that you have that, that allows you to do so well for, for so long? Well, I've had to ride a lot of ups and downs along the way. It hasn't been easy. I've had lots of injuries and lots of setbacks. Um, but I think the big thing is that I've kept running because it brings me a lot of uh, peace and fulfillment and enjoyment. And I really, truly love to compete. I love seeing how good I can be and training my butt off to see what that is, to see what my potential is. And um, you know, you just have to kind of commit to the long term with these kind of sports. Right. And I guess it's, it's got to be not just loving it, but loving to push yourself, right? To, to, to your absolute limit. Yeah. To be honest, some days I don't actually love it. it some days are quite painful, <laughs> but I love the process of it. And I love, uh, I love the feeling of, you know, in a workout, giving it all I've got and finishing completely exhausted and, and knowing that I went, went to my limits on a day and that, that is a really rewarding feeling. These Olympics are going to be a little different, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to look, being, you know, still in a pandemic. Is there anything about that that concerns you or that you expect to be different? It's going to be entirely different than my experience in 2004. Um, we've already been briefed on our protocol, and it's going to be a very strict quarantine bubble kind of situation. So the whole social, cultural fun of being an athlete of the Olympics will unfortunately be stripped away. Um, we won't have the opportunity to cheer on our other athletes from other sports across the country and partake in opening and closing ceremonies. And there's, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff that goes on beyond competing at the Olympics. But um, thankfully, I've had that experience, and I'm just really intent on going in there and doing everything I can do to have the best race on the day. All right. Well, I know there's tons of people here cheering for you. Good luck. Thank you so much.